Hello, and welcome to the Global Luxury Real Estate Mastermind with me, your host, Michael Valdez. Today's guests, oh my God, need absolutely no introduction. They are superstars in our industries. Tim and Julie Harris, thank you for joining me today. This is going to be such an awesome conversation, and you're my first couple that's ever on the show. So welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate your introduction. But and we, your enthusiasm. We, we do have to do a little warning. Julie just had a crown replaced. So yes. dro Ouch. drool starts to come out of her numb side of her mouth. <laughs> Don't it's, think it. Yeah. Tell us because I can't see it's I know. this side. I this is, <laughs> listen, it's 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 like we've got to be real, right? With the audience. You guys know exactly. this better than anyone. You guys have the number one podcast in our industry, which I'm going to touch on later. But sure. I actually wanted to start from the beginning. How did you guys get started in real estate? <laughs> well, that's a great question. Um, you know, we've been married for 30 years this year. So we've actually had a series of businesses together starting in high school. Wow. And that high school business uh, migrated to a college business back when you could pay for college. We had a car cleaning and detailing business together. And one day when, you know, when you have a business like that and you live in the Midwest and it snows, that kind of dries up a bit. And we went to an open house. This is our JP yeah. story if you're okay. Uh, so we went to an open house and, and who has an open house after a snowstorm? There was probably a 20 foot snow drip with a big open house sign on the top. And we had just been talking about maybe, maybe we want to do something different. We were in the early 20s, you know, maybe we don't want to have the detail business forever. And this was on our street in a snowstorm. What else are you going to do? So we wander into this open house. And in that open house was a broker who was about our age, maybe a year or two older, who we're still friends with to this day. And he had a really busy open house in spite of the horrible weather. And what happened was he, we got into a conversation. And I remember he said to you, he said, you know, I'm going to make $100,000 this year. And we looked at each other and we thought, huh, you could just see the gears going. And then we we would have what we call our Harris Summit. We went, when it, that happens, we would fly to Florida, right? And so we had a meeting and we decided that day, that, well, I remember that was mid-March that we decided that's when we would get licensed. Every year at the end of the year, and it was about that time, we would go down to Florida to Key West and we'd sell this place called the Pelican Lodge. And Julie and I would have what we call our Harris Summit. Goal setting, stuff like that. Right. And the detail business was doing really well. Uh, we had like seven people working for us. But as she was alluding, in the winter, there's not a lot of people in central Ohio that want to pay 200 bucks to have their cars clean. So yes. just that to was, get dirty again. And <laughs> But this is an interesting, you said early 20s. This was when we were about probably 20 and 21 or yeah. 22 and 21, because we got married when we were 20 and 21. She was that's 20. True. Yeah. Yeah. So this was really, <laughs> really early. early. You asked how we got in. That's how we got in. I love this. This is, this is pretty awesome, yeah. actually. Yeah. So Julie's I actually... Yeah, Julie's 30, Julie's 35. She's been 35. Times, She's so. been 35 for maybe uh 15 years, but I, you know. I like that number. I like to celebrate it a lot. I'm, I'm, I'm you know what? I, you know, you can pass for 35. So that's all I appreciate good. That. You can very probably kind. keep Thank doing you. that all day long. <laughs> all right. So wait a minute. That was going to lead me to my next question. How you two met. So you guys met in high school. Is that right? Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. That is a story. That's a story. <laughs> I want to hear the story. Let's give me a story. Netflix so, special. So Julie was the cheerleader. <laughs> what happened? What, how did you meet? Yeah, I mean, basically, I, we could get into the, the nuts and the bolts of it, but that's the gist of it. That's you know? crazy. But, but we met in high school, and you know, we started dating when she was 16 and I was 17, and we dated pretty much consistently throughout high school. Yeah. I went away to college, and she had the audacity to go to homecoming or some other guy. <laughs> and that was about the end of that yeah. for me. So I couldn't, I, so I had to reel the fish back in. Yep. So, so I transferred back to a oh local school goodness. started going to Otterbine. And then we went to high state together because I didn't want to lose her. So, I mean, you know, that was, that's, that's the story. The All right. Now. Okay. So that's amazing. So the idea that you've had three decades together, you work together, you're married. What's the challenges that you have faced as a married couple in business together. Should we tell the truth or lie? Let's mm -hmm. lie. <laughs> Nothing. No Nothing problems ever. All. It's easy. It's Next question. Out every day. Next yeah. question. Peaches and cream. Um, Peaches well, and cream. I, you know, I think that that changes, and and couples in business together would probably agree that 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 uh, evolves over time, right? So sure. one of the things that we learned in the real estate practice very early, um, we we read the uh, E Myth together. And we started to separate what we did so that there wasn't a lot of 
well, why didn't you do that? And why didn't you do that? And wasn't that in your wheelhouse? And who's going to handle this? And who's going to work with that client? So we separated what I did and what he did. And then as we had, we've had a small team, a big team, different iterations in our real estate career, we separated those things so that you could own that responsibility. If that's what you were supposed to do, that was your accountability. And I think that that has also translated into our coaching over the years. We've had podcasts about that so that we don't have any um, interruptions. Yeah, <laughs> so any that we don't ask. I, right on cue. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's perfect. Um, but that that was something that we learned early on. And I think that we have used throughout our various careers. What would what would you? No, that's it. Share? I mean, basically, Julie and I, um, when we ran our, so we sold 100 houses, or 103 houses with our pendings. Our first year in real estate, you're not, you're not. No, I'm not drooling. Nothing's I'm coming just, out. You're good. You're <laughs> fine. And and uh, we sold between 100 and 200 houses every year thereafter. And in that business, when we first got into the business, Julie wasn't doing a lot of selling. She was basically, you know, I'd hook them and I and she'd cook them. Was basically the way it was saying. Working. She'd run the back end of the business and I would do most of the sales, and that worked. And then um, as the business evolved, we hired other people to do the transactional stuff that she was originally responsible for. She would manage them. And then she started prospecting and she started selling. And then the business really took off. But uh, there's a lot of little details that we're missing. You know, we were Howard Britton Stars, National Association of Realtors had written a bunch of articles on us. Um, just a lot of that sort of thing. Julie and I wrote a book when we were in our early 20s called Zero to 10 Million in One Year, which is what we did our first year. Mm -hmm. wow. And um, yeah, so we were with Remax at the time. And so Remax had us going to different regions and whatnot, mm -hmm. flew us out to Colorado. But in the late, really, 90s, we started coaching and real estate started to come around. And people, we were at a Howard Britton conference. Howard said, um, you know, I'm going to start my own coaching program and the coaching program. I'm just, if you're interested, it was right before a big break. There's probably 2,500 people in the room. I remember that. And uh, he said, if you are interested in having us coach you, take your business card, put it up on stage and we'll collect it. And we'll follow up with you after the event. Well, we watched, Julie and I were in the back of the room and we watched as like 2,500 people just- It was a stampede. Basically. It looked like a snowstorm wow. of business cards hit the stage. Well, this, this was right before- coaching really took off. Mm -hmm. And so Julie and I were in the back of the room and then people started asking us if we offer any coaching. We didn't know what coaching was truthfully, uh, but of course we said yes, you know, and um, our first clients, we still have our, they were still, you yeah. know, Michael and Robin yeah. Gordon, who are the number one agents. Uh, and yes, I'm trying to recruit them for EXP mm -hmm. are the number one agents for um, in the Philadelphia mainline area, which I'm sure, you know, luxury is your niche. Hello, and you. they are with uh, Berkshire Hathaway, I believe, or no, no, they're with yeah, Berkshire Hathaway, um, you know, they do, I think, over 200 million a year. And we've had other clients, too, that we've had with us since the start, basically. Mm -hmm. I mean, Julie's, had, Julie's got personal clients that she's had um, for 18 okay. years. I yeah. mean, if you can believe that. Seen their incredible. kids grow up. Yeah. That's and I mean, so this, yeah. So evidently, we were pretty good at whatever we were uh, trying to figure out along the way. But okay, since well, then, the, I was actually yeah. going to go there because we were talking about coaching and you guys are probably one of the most successful coaches in the country in our industry. And you've done it for such a long time. So why you sort of like maybe fell into it in the beginning would have been by circumstance. But why do you coach now? Because you don't need to. We so don't. Why do you coach the, now? The truth is, is Julie and I don't. Julie's got like six. We have a handful of private clients. And yeah. Yeah. Air coaching as well. Yeah. Um, well, and, well, and why do we stay let's involved? Answer, yeah. Let's answer this question. Mm -hmm. So, so she has like six clients. I have zero clients, uh, personal clients, but we used to have every day, Julie and I would start at 5 AM in the morning and we would have, you know, 12 to 14 clients a day, a private half five hour coaching week. calls. And we did that for yeah. like five, six years. Mm -hmm. And so we would do that every single morning, starting at 5 AM. We'd end the day around 1 PM. And so if you add all those coaching calls up, that's, that was really, truly intense. Well, so what happened is the business evolved, the coaching industry involved, essentially, you know, when agents started being tempted with other different, you know, technology companies and buying leads, selling coaching became more challenging. And so what we decided to do is we started to essentially, um, I, I guess, distill the essence of what our coaching program was and make it so that it's available to everyone through Premier Coaching, which we're about to rebrand as Experience Coaching. Mm -hmm. And so for that, they get a daily semi-private coaching call. They've got all the content that the people that had been paying us personally 2,500 a month to, you know, back when we were doing private coaching. Mm -hmm. So all the best aspects of what you get as part of our coaching uh, system, you get now and someone can join for around hundred bucks a month if they, if they chose one of the options. We can pay. actually reach a lot more people that way. Yep, and we can do it daily, you know, the model. And, and, you know, again, the coaching model has evolved over the years. 
And so back in the beginning, you know, you couldn't do Zoom or Facebook Live or none of that happened. So it was a lot of one-on-one -on, -one on the phone. Sure. Uh, but that's that's where it's it's gone. And they get the scripts, the pre-listing package, all of our our main content, and of course access to coaches all the time as well. So that's really our way of giving back to an industry that's been so fantastic for us. And we really are very passionate about that through uh, the Premier Coaching and, of course, our podcast that you're familiar with. And, so you know, and I was about to sort of say that because you say, oh, I love that. Harris Rules. There it is. Well, so this yeah. book, I'll tell you, this is something I'll tell you. I'll show you something funny. Well, funny yeah. to me, not funny to Julie. All right. So on Amazon, where this is where this is published, it doesn't there's no and. So it says Tim Harris and then it says Julie Harris. But when you look at the actual listing on Amazon, it just says Harris Rules, Tim Harris. It actually mm -hmm. clips the Julie Harris part. Mm -hmm. which I think that's kind of funny because she truthfully did like 98% of this. Yeah. We, we wow. came up with the concept <laughs> in, in the chapter ideas, but she and, and two publishers or two uh, editors editors yeah. actually wrote it. But this but is- Thank you for giving me that. Oh, I always do. <laughs> I never said anything other than that. So, so, but this has got 500 five-star reviews on Amazon. It's quickly becoming um, the best-selling book specifically for real estate agents, followed probably by Gary Keller's book that he wrote back in yep. the 90s. So this, this has been something that a lot of, you know, it's so cool to go to bookstores. We just got done driving around the country for 60 days and we would go to different Barnes and Nobles and just obviously some airports and seeing the book for sale. That's really incredible. But that book is essentially the, um, it's the, the distillation of a lot of podcasts, coaching calls. And, you know, we were having coaching clients say, you know, how do we put all of this together into yep. a system? And so it's very logically laid out. It starts, I mean, there, there's a section about, you know, how do I know if I want to be a solo agent or have a partner or why would I want a team or why wouldn't I want a team and what each of those lifestyles even looks like, right? What does that uh, business structure look like? So it lays all of that out and uh, something that we're really proud of. We don't force everyone basically to, you know, the, the thing nowadays is people basically will say, you got to form a team, you got to do this, yeah, you yeah, got to yeah. do the other thing. And the reality of it is, is most agents getting in the business I need to focus on one thing. They need to focus on becoming the best listing agents they possibly can. Listing agents. 100%. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. And especially you know in the what? state. Yeah. It, it's sort of like, I want to challenge something you just said earlier, Tim. You just sort of said, you don't coach anymore, but look at that book <laughs> that you did. You coach people every single day. Look at your podcast. You right. guys have That's the true. number one podcast in our industry, 20 million downloads that you do yeah. daily, which actually blew me away. And it's the idea that that is how you touch people on a daily basis. And that's where you actually touch people in so many different countries. Tell me about the podcast, because I think that's extraordinary what you've done. Well, and thank you for having me as a recent guest. You're welcome. Yes, it was fantastic. You were a lot of fun. One of um, our favorite but, shows ever. But but just for the sake of for the sake of coaching. Mm -hmm. What yeah. we do on the pod, what we do, there's a difference between training or presenting and coaching. That's true. Okay, so so what we're doing in the podcast is mostly presenting and, and doing some training. It's definitely not coaching. It's the difference between sitting in a classroom and having a teacher teach you. That's the podcast or that's live presentations, which we do a lot of, um, versus having a tutor, right? So the, the intensity of work and effort required for Julia and I to have full schedules of coaching clients again, which we could like that. All we'd have to do is announce it on the podcast and everyone went, you know, that's what sure. we, we did that. We made that mistake a couple of years ago. I thought, well, I might want 10 <laughs> clients again. And, and then we got really busy again. Yeah. And I, it was, it, it <laughs> yeah. just, it's, you know, we right now, what we're doing is we're uh, coaching the next generation of coaches that work for us. I love and that. we're trying to expand that way. So we right now we have like 13 coaches that work for us. We have the premier coaching, which is about to become experienced coaching. Oh, by the way, we're wearing EXP colors. I noticed you're not. See, I love yeah. that. <laughs> well, but the podcast is sort of the 30,000 foot yeah. uh, conceptual things like, you know, it'd be a really great idea to have a pre-listing package so that, you know, the seller would know who you are before you get there. Coaching is here's what goes in the pre-listing package. Here's yeah. how you present it. And here's how you objection handle should that come up. So that's kind of the difference. But uh, to your point, I appreciate what you're saying is, is that in a sense that our coaching reaches podcast. that the, with the podcast. Absolutely. So, but so, it really, really all works together. But the podcast content is essentially um, information that's tactical, practical, and, and we're hopefully trying to get into action. Julie and yeah, I yeah. are not big on uh, like, um, you know, motivational speaker types. People will assume that's what we are. <laughs> we don't do the rah-rah. We don't do it. That, I mean, we'll do it, but that's not what we do. We, we know that ultimately, if someone's just going to something for motivation, it's going to last about as long as this cup of coffee, right. you know, it doesn't last. 
But if they have education and if they have, if they're developing or have the mindset of being of service to other people, yeah. and then we have told them and shown them what to do, that's how you're going to get the true change. And that's yeah. how people are going to get into action. Otherwise, it just comes and goes. I mean, it happens every year, beginning of year, every other right. brother joins the gym and by May or you know, April or May, they all quit there because it was just a sudden, you know, a sudden uh, burst. It, of didn't, it didn't take. It didn't take. Exactly. So great coaching. What we try to do is we get it to take with our podcast. You know, the I podcast, like, like you said, it's, uh, you know, listened to every single day um, by tens of thousands of agents who are downloaded in over 61 different countries. And we're number one in a lot of really funny countries that we have to look for on a map. Malta, Guam. <laughs> I knew where Malta and Guam, Guam are. Guam is but there's been a lot of things that end in Stan. Yeah, all the stands we have to look up. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yes. So you know who it is, is, and we've had conversations with them. It's a lot of our uh, deployed service members yep. that are listening, which we is do. fantastic. Wow. Yeah, we have a lot of lessons in places where there's military bases, which is because we time. wondered what, who in how, did, how you got there, and how well, did that happen? Exactly. We we're like, how the hell are we getting downloads yeah. in South Korea? Oh, <laughs> you're huge in South Korea. I right. know, it's or, or, I mean, Germany makes sense. We get a lot in Germany, but then you look at sure. South Korea, you think, huh? Okay, well, that's why they're military mm-hmm. people. So you know, you were just talking about being of service to others, and you also started alluding to the EXP colors. So I was actually going to ask you how you found EXP. Tell they me found- about that experience and how that's been for you as a platform. They found us uh, over and over and over again. And we kept on saying, no, that's the truth. And, um, you know, I'm not going to say, I mean, the fact is, is we just weren't EXP ready, <laughs> you know, yep. um, and we were worried from a enterprise perspective because of our coaching and our publishing and our media syndication that it would have a detrimental effect on um, our our business, frankly. Well, not because of EXP, but because we yeah. had always been broker agnostic. It wasn't right. anything particularly yes. anti-EXP. Right. It was more about being pro everyone else. Yeah. And that was our concern for a long time. Right. And it did that if that was not a um, that did not happen. Matter of fact, when we joined EXP, not we had uh, we sponsored uh, our first month. 43 people, which I don't know if anyone's ever done that in 30 days. They came in over the like next 60, but we definitely had over, it was 43 um, applications signed. And those were all people. And we didn't, I mean, that's when we were still learning about EXP, frankly, right. Julie moved her license, but those are all people that were work for Trust us. You. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so that's from the podcast. So we have a lot of people that are like, uh, when we talk about it, they're like, okay, you guys are like the good housekeeping seal of approval. Yeah. I mean, I don't even know how They're that like, sounds. Just tell us what to do. That's what they, that's sure. what they say to us. But as, as far as the, um, as far as the podcast in our, well, as far as our moving over to EXP, it came from an event. And why don't you talk about it? Well, so we had resisted and resisted. And then finally, a couple of different people that we trusted said, hey, you know what? We're doing this EXP event. It's near where you live. And we lived in Texas. We lived in Austin at the time. Um, it was like yep. an hour drive. And we're like, why not? Let's actually take this seriously and let's investigate it a, a bit. And so- we went there and we actually split up. We didn't uh, you know, go as Tim and Julie Harris. We just went as intend- attendees so that we could really be observational and not get into lots of coaching conversations or whatever. Yeah. So he went to one side of the room. I went to the other side of the room and it was really an amazing, incredible event. We this get recognized, we get recognized when we're together. We don't get recognized when we're not together at real estate yeah. events. Other than yeah. that, we don't get recognized. Exactly. Though we have had weird occurrence, occurrences Sometimes in here. airports. Yeah. yeah, in airports. But um, so we, and we agreed that we would have our own separate observations. And then after the event, we would on the drive home, have a discussion about well, what did you think? And what did I think? Right. <laughs> Um, just so that we wouldn't be tainted by each other's opinions sure. or by a mutual conversation that might have happened, something like that. And so on the way back, uh, I think you asked, I, I can't remember exactly how it went. Well, I was, she was ready to do it. She basically said, I, I was at that event. What really struck me was that the panelists that went up time and time again were normal agents, normal meaning yep. like maybe three to 5 million, 10 million, you know, like they had not just survived their first couple of years, but they were making a living. They were doing sure. fine. They're professional. Um, professional, right? And so but it was the would, audience though. It was the audience. Yeah. And so they, so they would present time and again, what an amazing difference it made that they had consistent passive income, even if it was just the equivalent of one commission check a month, that they could count on that. 
Well, it's the yeah. audience, really. I mean, that's what it was so, the audience. It was the attendees that convinced us more than anything. Yeah, because we were we so we've hosted a billion real estate events, been at a billion real estate events. Yep. And never had we been at a real estate event. Well, you've experienced this, Michael. Your background is very, you know, similar yep. as far as and but we'd never been at a real estate event before that had you had I know we, a different you, feel. You did have that experience. We talked about that. Yes. It, it was did, bizarre. Exactly. It it almost felt like when we went to that thing, I my my real estate, you know, coaching brain couldn't compute it because people seem so damn happy. I yes, know. we did like, talk about that. It this, was like, this is crazy. It is. It's like, this <laughs> is a real this? estate event. Why are you people so happy? Why are you so supportive of each other? <laughs> exactly. What is going on here? This is not normal. It's yeah. abnormal. The enthusiasm was just incredible. And we figured out on the long drive back up to uh, you know, San Antonio that it's because they have a agents there in the room. This is a Gene Frederick thing. I think there's 250 people there. They had an alternative pathway forward that was not financial pathway forward that was not predicated on just uh, real estate transactions, right? And right. so that inspired us for the name of our revenue share group at EXP, which is called Libertas, which means freedom in yes. Latin. So that's what got us thinking. But here's what the, Julie skipped this part. She didn't want to embarrass me, but I don't embar mind embarrassing right. myself. You can talk. <laughs> so we were, dri we were driving back up and we we're on what? what 35 North. No, it was 130. It was 130. Oh, the toll road. The toll yeah. road. Yeah. So you and, can drive fast. Exactly. And and so we were on the toll road and <laughs> I was saying like, I'm skeptical or whatever words I was using. And then she then basically said, uh, Tim, do you know? You, 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 do you agree that our highest and best purposes of being a service to our clients? Those aren't her words. But that's the essence of what she said. Yeah. Um, she said it much more Julie like, so I wouldn't see her coming. But what <laughs> she was trying to do is basically corner me and to get me to admit the fact that EXP's value set was in perfect alignment with ours as coaches, because what we want more than anything is we want our coaching clients to have richer, fuller, better, you know, lives across the board. And Absolutely. You know, our, and our belief that comes yeah. from having a really solid skill set that you can then carry forward and, you know, have a very predictable, duplicatable real estate business. But we always felt the biggest question we had in our coaching business for years was, um, which brokerage should we join? And we would stay agnostic and we would say, whichever one you want to, whatever, whatever, they're all about the same because they were. But after that EXP experience, we knew they weren't all the same. Yeah. And so Julie said to me, well, if you do feel that um, EXP is in alignment with what our mission is. And if you, you know, you're a hypocrite for not wanting to do it. That was basically the you know, knockout punch she threw at me. Well, what? And here you are. <laughs> yeah, it, well, yeah. exactly. But she so, was right. She was totally right. So the thing, <clears throat> excuse me, the thing was, if we are truly agent centric, as yeah. you know, we always coach that we are. Sure. And that was why we were originally broker agnostic is we were all about the agent, right? Right. And if we knew once we really got, and you can always see when people get the whole EXP thing, right? If you knew that, and you knew what a life-changing thing that can be for any agent, right? And you didn't share that with them as a coach. That's yes. pretty far out of integrity, right? So that's that was Love my that, nice that's way powerful. of saying we're we're being hypocrites and and not yeah. calling we're not practicing what we preach if we don't share that. Well, yeah. Glenn Sanford actually said, you know, he's the one that actually said uh, there's two things that agents don't do well. Number one is they don't pay their taxes. And I think it was Glenn. And number two, they don't save money. And yeah. EXP solves for uh, both of that. So stay. It's here. very true. And also, he also said it would be irresponsible of us not to share this with exactly. those that we would really sort of care about, about their future. That's so right. I want to ask you something about, you know, 30 years of coaching and being in the business. And we spoke a little bit about this when we saw 20, each other in Miami. 25. And uh, would you say more than that? No, no, no. It's 20, 25. Married, married for 30, 25 in the industry. Yeah, but okay. too damn All long. Right. I mean, long. Okay. Just because we'll, 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 we'll keep it sort of like, you know, sort of accurate. So 25 years in the industry. What would be three pieces of advice that you would give somebody entering the business today? And, you know, we spoke about this in Miami, that there's a really a whole generation of people that have only seen a very bull market and don't know what a down market is. And those skill sets are something they haven't developed. So what would be three pieces of advice you would give someone entering the business? Start. Mm, sure. Well, first of all, there's no real signs of a down market any time on the horizon. So, I mean, you're just you're just giving an example, basically. So we'll remove down market and we'll just talk about skill set. Is that cool? Sure. Well, so the the uh, secret sauce, to the most successful salespeople or communicators is basically being able to communicate proactively generation. Mm -hmm. And there's a whole generation of agents virtually. I mean, we talked about this, Michael, and it is kind yep. of fascinating. Considering the average lifespan of an agent, there is probably nobody in real estate other than, you know, us, the three of us, and maybe a handful of others 
that were actually living through the real estate crash because most everybody else got their licenses after and has only been in the business for less than five years. True. So True. they've only had to have one skill set, but more than that, not even a skill set, they've only known uh, real estate as a, uh, you know, buy your leads, um, essentially put them in a CRM, do worry about your branding and your marketing, worry about, you know, becoming a social influencer. And so here's, here's a thought that Julie and I have. The prevailing thought we have is all those things have a place, but they're definitely not the first thing and maybe not, uh, and frankly, maybe not even necessary if you want to have a long-term sustainable real estate practice. Because the one thing that if you look at all the top producing salespeople in the world, or really anybody in the world, is they have the ability to communicate, to speak. There's that's a whole, gen and, and, that, and for real estate, that's scripts. It's knowing what to say. It's knowing how to say it. It's objection handling. It's knowing how to present. It's, no, it's having a formal business and not just something that's flying by the seat of the pants. But what do most agents do when they get in the business? They think they have to master TikTok. You know, they right. think they have to work on their brand and their logo and they think and they build have, a team, even though they have no business really building a team. Right? Because they don't even know how to do it. They themselves. wouldn't know how to hold anybody accountable. So I, right. I think our first point would be learn how to lead generate on your own without buying business. Because as we say on the podcast, don't build your castle on somebody else's land. Right. Yeah. Don't build Love your that. castle on land you don't own. And that's what buying leads is. Because those platforms can change their rules. Look what hap what's happened with all the different examples. Right. You think you've got it covered and then they change the rules. So that's no way to, to create a business. So learn how to lead generate on your own. And that gives you freedom. Again, back to our Libertas uh, theme yes. of our organization. It gives you freedom. So an example would be, maybe I've been in real estate. I've been pretty successful on my own, but my husband gets transferred to another town. If I know how to create business on my own, all I have to do is get licensed and now I'm off to the races in my new town, right? So we have had coaching clients, for example, you teach them how to proactively lead generate and they decide that they don't want to live in central Ohio anymore. They want to move down to Florida or California or whatever. They can be up and running with listings within 90 days or less because they know how to proactively lead generate exactly. versus the other agent who's only knowing how to hopefully one day, you know, when you buy your business, it's basically a roulette wheel. You get a lead that day. Yep. And there's, and honestly, Michael, there's, there's so many, you know, Julie and I, well, I get criticized for using words like lie, but there's a lot of lies that are being told to real estate agents that are um, essentially, you know, they're insidious, they're ruining agents potential. And what really, you know, grades us is basically when you see agents who had great potential, but followed the wrong path and followed the wrong path for too long. And now they have to get out of real estate because they don't have the money to stay in real estate because they haven't had any closings. Yeah, they've thrown yeah. all of the all of the buying tchotchkes and crap on their credit card, then their NAR right. dues come they can't pay that, and now they're washed out, just like that. If all it's this, happening faster than it used to. If, if all this uh, fancy, shiny object stuff worked, wouldn't the failure rate of agents have been decreasing over the last 10 or 15 years since the advent of all this? It hasn't. It's so, been increasing. We um, have a way of checking. We have big lists from different states of the number of agents, and we you know, obviously market to them. And so what we have been watching is the number of agents that are in the business, I'm sorry, the, the amount of time that an agent is in the business appears to be shrinking, not expanding, shrinking. So, that, out faster. so that tells yeah. you all the buying business Mickey Mouse is doesn't work. Otherwise, people would be uh, staying in the business longer. Well, so I would say a, a second thing would be have a business plan. You know, don't be 100%. dabbling. Oh, my God. Yes. Yeah. And you can hear how agents speak. I was just uh, calling somebody out about uh, he had like two sentences and all the words were like, try maybe see how it goes, right? So when you have a business plan, it is, I am doing this, okay? This is what I, I'm doing. This is my daily schedule, which is reflective of my goals. I know how many contacts I need to make. I know how many appointments I've got to make. You're you don't just have a plan. That's the first part, but you're actually following a plan. Absolutely. So I think that's really important. And Julie, you know, I've said, that's so important. I've said this so often on here that success is a math problem. Right. You yeah, figure exactly. out what you want to do, what your goal is and work backwards as to what your goal should be yes. to a monthly, weekly and daily basis. Well, but exactly. what should your goal be? And this is another thing we say that's controversial because people don't they take it out of context. But, you know, what is your product of your real estate business? Like, what is the product you're producing? Um, yes. What is the actual product? And people, when we say this live, mm -hmm. they'll always, of course, everyone's heard us say it now. So they already know the answer. They spoil our fun. But before, you know, we would used to hear like, you know, 10 years ago, they would sell happy customers, sold houses, client for life, client for life, right? They would say all these sort of things. That's my, you know, commission check. You know, they yeah. say those, a listing, that's my product. Your product, and this is the part that sometimes people don't like, is profit. 
And if you're not making lots and lots of profit, why are you in business? Um, and so what we coach agents to do is lead with profit. So when you say your state, your goal, what agents will often do is they'll choose goals that aren't, um, you know, basically aren't going to result in profit. Well, or aren't based on anything. They'll, they'll say, well, I got to do a hundred deals because the person next to me did 50 deals and I'm better than them. Yeah. So that's not, I mean, that's reflective of lack of business maturity on one level, but why maybe you only need to do 28 deals a year be, and to move the needle for you. Right. 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 And so I love what you said. It's a math problem, right? Start with the end in mind, actually do some, we, in the, in our books and in our coaching, it's what do you have to earn? Then do your goal setting to move the needle in life. Usually that's, that's almost exactly three times what you have to earn in order to pay your bills. Yep. And then divide that by your average net commission. And there's your math problem, right? That's it's, it's exactly it. So what's number three? Good question. What was the question? <laughs> what, what is the question? Three pieces of advice for a new agent. Okay, I got one. Okay. Communication, right. business plan is what we have. What's the third one? Um, well, by the way, we're going to do a little commercial here. Sorry. Don't edit it off. So if they want a free copy Morning. of our if they want a free copy of our business plan, which is called the real estate treasure map, mm -hmm. we do sell it on Amazon for 20 bucks. We'll give it to all your listeners. They just have to text the name Harris, H-A-R-R-I-S to 47372. Text the name Harris to 47372. And we will text them back a link and they can download the real estate treasure map, which is their fill in the blank business plan. Thank you um, for, for that gift to the listeners. Thank course. you. Yes. It's a pleasure. Uh, so to answer the last question, I mean, Julie and I, truthfully, we could talk about a billion different things in our book uh, as far as different strong, you know, suggestions, but I'll tell you the last one and it's a bittersweet, um, you know, bit of true truism. It's very, it's so sometimes it's, truthy. Over, it's overly truthy for people. Yeah. It's that you got, if you want ever increasing levels of long-term success in your business and personal life, you have to, and this is the part that people don't like, do what you don't want to do when, when you don't want to do it at the highest level. I and that's just that one. Oh my God. I love that one. Yeah. So you got to do what you don't want to do when you don't want to do it at the highest level, which is the antithesis of what most people do, and which is the antithesis of what most people are told to do. Follow your passion. The success will come BS. Yeah, get right? away from the easy button. Things. If, if you don't, if you don't <laughs> like it, if you don't like, if it's too hard, or if it makes you hurt your feelings, it's not going to work. BS. Long-term levels of ever-increasing success in your business and personal life comes from doing what you don't want to do when you don't want to do it at the highest level, not just when you feel like it. And that's the thing that people yeah. forget. Well, and Love how else it. are you going to learn, right? So exactly. a lot of times people don't prospect. Oh, I use the word, right? People don't proactively lead generate because they're afraid of the scripts. They're afraid of the scripts because they never use the scripts. They've never internalized the scripts. So you're not going to be able to actually learn and get better if you don't sometimes put yourself in harm's way, which to Absolutely an agent is hearing true. the word no. Absolutely true. Okay, now on the flip side, what's the greatest lesson you guys have learned in your career thus far? <laughs> well, I, I'll take the, the little- You can run with that one. Well, I, 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 I think that- <laughs> Was that one of your questions? <laughs> it was actually. Oh, man. And I do have a call commute. Okay. Um, I would say that, and this is a tough thing to- uh, absorb and to live, but everything worth doing in life is really going to take longer than you think. Mm. And it's going to take more effort and it's going to be harder sometimes and trying to get rid of that impatience. you know, we talk about the stages of mastery, right? You have to live yeah. through concentration to get to momentum. You can't skip a step, which is what everybody's trying to do all the time, not just in real estate, but kind of in our society these days. Right. But things are going to take longer than you want for virtually everything. I mean, we, we have an eight-year-old, right? I, I'm not a big fan of, of the newborn stage. I wanted her to walk, okay? <laughs> I wanted her to be fun. So that took longer than I probably would have liked, right? <laughs> so take, choose your example in life, right? Becoming a really powerful listing agent takes effort. Instead yeah. of just taking what the breadcrumbs, you know, your repeat clients, which would be called luck, that's not a business plan. So I think, you know, in life and in business is that, you know, embrace the fact and understand the fact that things will take longer, but they'll take shorter if you work on it consistently. I love that answer. I I'm not going to try to do better. That's good. No, I love that answer. Okay. I have one final question for you both. So in your book of life, and you've spent a great deal of your life together. So in your book of life, what is this chapter called? Oh, that's a good question. That's actually another question I remember from your questions. And we actually thought about this one. We talked about it. So do you know, uh, I'll, um, Apex, 
that's what we would that's what she and I decided together so what's an apex I've done some different uh, than peak apex hill yeah yeah so I've done some competitive uh race car driving and what an apex what an apex is is you turn your you have to when you're coming up to a corner you want to hit the corner at the apex that way you can come out of the corner uh with as much power as you can you know in preparation so if you ever watch formula one which Julie and I are formula one fans we've been to formula one tracks all over the world when you drive into, you, you'll see that the guys that are more and gal, well, guys they're in Formula One are uh, the fastest ones are the ones that lake, uh, break late, hit the apex and are able to accelerate as, as quick as they possibly can out of the apex. Now, if you miss the apex, you oftentimes will find yourself running off course, running off track, or at the very least, you'll be slower. And so what Julie and I've done, we've been married for 30 years, even though Julie's only 35. <laughs> Again and again, I just yeah. like that. that will get you arrested in most states. So be careful. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. You you would have been eleven. Yeah, well, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> so not, Good point. Not not Ohio though. No, Midwest. <laughs> that's a joke. We can make Ohio jokes. We're from Ohio. Because we're from there. We're from Ohio. You can't. Okay. So so uh, if you, for example, if you're driving, if you find yourself driving a car. One of the first things they teach you when you're learning how to drive a race car is you do not look in the direction in which you're sliding, right? So if your car is sliding this direction or this direction and you look in that direction, for some, there's, your brain is wired to go in the direction your eyes are looking. So you need to yeah. look in the direction that you want to go, not the direction you're necessarily going. So if that's basically if you're, if you're aiming towards the apex because you want to get around the corner the fastest and you know, you're using all the experience of your life to basically know have the confidence and the skill set to be able to master that corner and to be able to get out of there with speed and not worrying. And if the car does start to slide, you know, you have the confidence in order to get it back on track. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're at the point in our lives after three decades of being married and, you know, two and a half decades of being in this industry that we, we know we are at 50 <laughs> and 51. No. We know we're at a point in our careers where we're just, we just hit the apex and now we're going in a direction where we're going to start going a lot faster and, um, you know, in all aspects of our lives, health wise, uh, spiritually wise, educationally wise, I mean, she and I listen to podcasts yeah. and read books constantly, financially, of course, there's so many different things that we can feel because we did what we didn't want to do. And we didn't want to do it at the highest level for long enough. And to Julie's yeah. prior point about repetitious boredom pays off, which mm -hmm. is what you were saying. Sure. Um, we've been doing that. We did that for so long that now we're seeing the momentum from all of those years of doing all of that work. Um, you know, the book, the podcast. But thing. we can say thank you, past Tim and Julie, for grinding all that away. And the, financial, know, and the financial. And now what's next, right? Yeah, I mean, the right. financial aspect too. I mean, Julie and I started out, we were just poor kids and <laughs> from central Ohio. Well, I was a poor kid. She was a middle-class kid. Her we parents, shared a car. We shared a car when we got into real estate. Yeah, we shared a car when we got into real estate. I mean, you know, we That's had a cool. bunch of student loans we got into real estate. And now we live at the Ritz-Carlton in Puerto Rico, you know? And now we, we have, do. we, you know, we've, we've created for ourselves in our, in 30 years, what we dreamed we would. And we've been spending the last probably five years uh, thinking about what we want to create for the next 30 years. And that's what we're doing. And we're big believers that for the, you know, we could, I don't, I won't get too far off on a tangent, but you got to be careful. Like at our age, a lot of people subconsciously start benchmarking their lives for, to to, to have essentially productive lives and for another 15 or 20 years. But Julie and I have been reading a lot of books, uh, the singularity and things of that nature, which we actually believe we're right on the, the uh, threshold of what's going to be a technological revolution in healthcare that's going to allow all of us to live longer. So the question that Julie and I had, and we're working on this as a podcast, a podcast uh, concept, what if at 50, you're not uh, you know, you're not three quarters of the way through, or, you know, maybe a little bit, you know, that, what if yeah. you're only a third of the way through, or what if you're only, you know, something like 40% of the way through, right? What if you knew you had more runway right. than yeah. we're all kind of pre-programmed to do? What if Michael Valdez is going to live to 20 or 30, I mean, 120 or 130, right? What if, what if it's not just as far, like when most people do, and you can see it, is they'll start um, like, oh, my father lived to this age, my mom lived to this age, my so grandpa. That's like your expiration date. But they don't yeah, think right, it consciously. Exactly. But they don't think it consciously. They think it subconsciously. And then you can see they start like I see this when we're Julie and I are coaching agents, we're sponsoring agents. 
you know, talk to people sometimes when they're about 40, they start taking, they start not giving a shit whether that they're going to hit the apex or not. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're starting to believe their best days are behind them. Yeah. And like their ship has sailed. So right. you know, let's just check out. And their environment's surrounded by other people that reinforce that. And so they, they lose what could have been the best part of their lives. I mean, look at Warren Buffett made most, most of his wealth after the age of 60. Yeah, most, yeah. Pe- most people, according to any report you read, make most of their income, have the best earning years. And you have to assume there's a quality of life that goes along with more earning. That is true. Sure, one would hope. When they're, when they're mm-hmm. older than us, yeah. you know. Yeah. Well, look at Glenn Sanford. Yeah, look at Glenn Sanford, for example, you know. Yeah. I mean, most people don't experience peak earning and living years until they're in their mid-50s, until their mid-60s. But how many people give up you know, they're, with their, you, so that's the point. So we know we're I at the apex it. and we're not allowing ourselves to be complacent. Hitting the apex. It's a strong, strong message. Tim and Julie Harris, I got to say something. It's like, you guys are so selfless and what you give to others is extraordinary. Thank you for your guidance in our industry, for who you both are and for the friendship we're developing. I really love who you both are as individuals and as a couple and what you do so well and so much for others. And thank you for being on the show. Hey, we loved it. And it yeah, was great. If you, you guys haven't, if you guys haven't listened to the interview we did with Michael on Real Estate Coaching awesome. Radio, you have to listen to it. It really was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Thank you so much. And thank you all for listening. This has been the Global Luxury Real Estate Mastermind with me, your host, Michael Valdez. Mm-hmm.